Well, our farm is Cane Creek Valley Farm, and myself and my husband, Jeremy Sizemore, and my parents, Tony and Celia Nesbitt, we're business partners together, and we're working to diversify the family farm. Our, our entire farm, all of the fields are on Cane Creek, and so it just seemed natural to name it Cane Creek Valley Farm because the mountains surround that creek, and it's been part of the farm our entire life, yeah. All of our fields are on Cane Creek. This is our fourth year that we're certified organic and our fourth year growing organic produce. We are we went from two and a half acres our first year to 25 acres this year. Well I grew up on a farm and it's been part of our family my entire life and I got a degree in horticulture and wanted to come back to the family farm and use it. It was always dairy we grew up feeding the calves and cleaning stalls and we did do a garden, a family garden every year. So we grew up hoeing and working in that. But my great grandfather started in organic vegetables. I think it's something that continued from 1905 to about 1954. And then due to a flood, we ended up in dairy farming. It took all the crops in 1954 and they bought the first cow and started dairy. The family has come full circle back on the farm in my opinion. We're back to organic vegetables. But we want to diversify it and do more than just that. Actually, we, we looked at a lot of different options, everything from landscaping plants to um, tree nurseries, and, and vegetables just seemed to fit. It fit the rotation with what my dad grew already on the land, and it wasn't such a risk. It was flood plains, most of it, so you wouldn't want to put anything permanent there. So it just seemed to fit, and we just gave it a go. I find the lifestyle to be very hectic six months out of the year, and the other six months are very enjoyable. So, you know, it's, it's a win-win, I think. It's not that hard. I think it'll become more sustainable as we become a more sustainable operation that has the management and the health that it needs, and we're not doing it all. But that takes years to get there. Our first year, um, we went to a sustainable agriculture conference in Durham, and I met well, I'm not even sure who I met. I think I met Tony there, and I might have met you too. And um, so I got your card, and that put me in touch with you. But we grew a lot of vegetables our first year and could not move them all through direct sales and locally. And so we gave you all a call, and you saved us. <laughs> you moved a lot of tomatoes for us our first year. Every day is different. That's what makes it hard. There's no predictability. You think there is, and you map out your schedule and what you have planned, and then something always goes wrong, whether it's weather or labor or, I don't know, trucking, truck gets, you know, or a cooler breaks down. There's always something. So it's challenging, but yet it keeps life interesting. Actually, I think the most fulfilling part is being able to think of the farm in the future and know that we're doing something to make a future for our family farm. Because in the past, we looked at the farm and it was, well, this is probably it. What else do we do with it? And I think we've found an opportunity that it's exciting. It's exciting to be part of. Well, I hope that in a few years from now, we have a really vibrant CSA. And we are able to offer them more than vegetables and herbs. We're able to offer them more fruits and eggs and meat off of our farm. And hopefully within the five-year plan of being able to offer our own milk. And so our future is to sell to our community and the surrounding communities and to make a direct relationship with those people.